Hey guys, so today we're checking out the Baja Designs 8XL linkable roof light bar kit fitting all 2021 and newer for Broncos. So if you're in search of a premium setup when it comes to accessory lighting for your Bronco, you have definitely found it. Now this will be great for the Bronco owner who wants to drastically increase their visibility at night on dark back roads and trails and likes the classic individual pod light appearance, but also wants something that's sleek and low profile at the same time. Now jumping right into the construction, this light bar will consist of eight extra large linkable lights that are gonna have a combination of a six degree spot and a 44 degree cornering beam for optimal visibility. Now in total, this is gonna utilize 32 high intensity LEDs giving off roughly 25,200 lumens that will reach out at all angles for close and long range so you can literally see whatever is in front of you out at night. The lights themselves will also be incredibly strong with a cast aluminum housing and a powder coat finish on the back to resist any corrosion on the aluminum. The lens on the front will be hard coated polycarbonate material to ensure that they're going to hold up to whatever kick up or branches that they may come in contact with while still being completely transparent. Now the lights themselves will also be waterproof with a rating of IP69K, which is one of the highest water and dust proof ratings. Now that will make sure that the lights won't fog up over time or any water or dirt is going to potentially get inside and hurt the LEDs. Not to mention, this is going to be a pretty inclusive kit considering that this will come with the brackets to mount up the light bar and the wiring harness to get everything hooked up. Now, premium performance and quality does come at a price and this is going to come in at roughly $2,100 for the kit. Now, when comparing this to some other options available on the page, what I like about this choice is the fact that not only are you getting a combination of cornering beams and spot beams with only eight lights, but you're also getting a high LED output and an airtight build. Not to mention, this is going to be a complete kit as to where some of their choices may come with individual pod lights. They may not be uh, linkable like this option and they may not come with the brackets or the harness to get everything operable at one time. Now if you're in search of a pod light bar that's going to give you outstanding lighting performance and you're willing to pay the extra couple of bucks to do so, then this is going to be right up your alley. Now when it comes to install, this will be a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you about two hours to get the job done with some basic hand tools. Now one of our installers here is going to show you what that process looks like step by step. That's going to wrap it up for my review. Let's go ahead and get into the install. The tools you'll need for this installation include 3 8 electric or regular ratchet, quarter inch ratchet, 10 and 11 millimeter sockets, socket extension, 4 millimeter hex head socket, T30 Torx bit socket, trim removal tool, an 11 millimeter wrench, diagonal cutters, and the included zip ties, zip tie mounts, and Allen key tools. How's it going everybody? Today we have a roof lighting kit that we're gonna install for you. And we're gonna get started on the roof accessory ready mounts on our Bronco. So let's get to it. Here's our accessory ready mounts and we're gonna remove the cover. And then there's a plate with two 10 millimeter nuts holding it down that we're gonna remove. So there's a little tab in the very upper portion of our cover here. Just press that in with our trim removal tool. We can play, pop the cover off. And then here are the two 10 millimeter nuts that I was speaking of. Once we have both of the nuts off, let's remove the plastic trim piece. Once that's off, we're gonna do the same thing for the other side and get that plate off as well. At this point, we're gonna assemble our light bracket mounts here. And to do that, we're gonna need some hardware and some tools. So in total, since there's two brackets, we're gonna need two of the one inch bolts, two of the nylon locking nuts, four of the flat washers and two of the rubber mounts. And to tighten this hardware down, we're gonna use our 11 millimeter socket and our 11 millimeter wrench. First, take your bolt and put it through one of the flat washers. Then take the rubber mount and put it through the recess side of the rubber mount. Then it's gonna go through the bracket with another flat washer and then the nylon locking nut. And we're gonna tighten this down using our 11, mil <clears throat> excuse me, our 11 millimeter socket and wrench. 
and we're not going to tighten it down all the way as we want to be able to adjust this on this long slot here. So just enough so that it is fastened and secure, but not too tight where we can't move it. So that's good right about there. And this won't need to be tightened down later, so it is gonna stay as it is. And once you have this one completed, just do the same exact steps for the other side. Once you have both brackets assembled, we're gonna actually mount these to the roof next. So we're gonna need this hardware here, uh, four of the flat washers and four of the nylon locking nuts. And this is the passenger side, so it's gonna be oriented like this. Once we install it, it'll be like this, but I wanted to show you the angle. So looking at it from the front, this will be your passenger side and this will be your driver side. All right, so we're gonna locate our light bracket right here at our accessory ready mount location. So we're gonna place that on, then we're gonna put our washer, our washers over both studs as well as our nylon locking nuts, and then we're gonna tighten them down with our 10 millimeter socket. So when you're doing this, make sure that your rubber mount here that we installed is all the way to the forward uh, most point of the bracket. That way you can get, uh, you can capture the most amount of threads here on the studs. Now, and again, we are not gonna be tightening these all the way down. We wanna keep them loose enough so that we, can, where we have the ability to adjust them as needed. That should be good right there. So when you have this one installed for the driver's side, you're just gonna repeat the same exact steps. So we're back at our workbench with our linkable lights. And for this step, we're gonna need two Allen keys that are provided with the kit. And we're gonna be removing some hardware here from the center bracket. So first, we're gonna remove the top and bottom bolts from our center bracket here on the lights. So there's two on the top, two on the bottom. Once we get these separated, then we're gonna remove the two housing bolts on either side, either light, left or right. Make sure to keep that hardware safe as we will be replacing it. Right, just gonna move this one out of the way, slide this side just a bit so we can reach these bolts here on the light housing. So we moved everything else to the side for now to assemble our preload mechanism here. So there's a couple notes you need to make. So these are the two main components of the preload mechanism. And you can see on this piece that on the bottom side here, it does have an extra angled edge. So that's gonna be the bottom here. The one that has the longer flat edge up top, that side is your top. And again, so you have this extra angled edge right here. That's the bottom. So we're gonna assemble it as such. Now for this assembly, we're gonna be using the longer bolts that come in the kit and the larger nylon locking nuts and six of our flat washers. Let me show you how it all goes together. To begin assembling our preload mechanism, we're gonna install the rubber bump stop here. As before, we're gonna take our bolt, the flat washer, and we're using the oversized flat washers for this. We're gonna put it through the recessed side of our rubber bump stop. And we're gonna put that through our base bracket with another oversized flat washer and our nylon locking nut. And to tighten this down, we're using our 11 millimeter wrench and socket. Once 
Once that's snug, we're gonna take our extension bracket. We're gonna place it behind our base bracket. And we're gonna take our two bolts with the smaller flat washers, slide one washer over each, and then put it through both of the brackets. So one thing I do have to mention about the orientation of the extension bracket here is it has this extra angled uh, side or edge here on the bottom. So you can see this is just a you know longer straight edge and then this one has that extra angled edge at the bottom so make sure that's facing down. Once you have the bolts through go ahead and slide on the other two flat washers and nylon locking nuts and again these are getting tightened down with our 11 millimeter wrench and socket. And these we're gonna tighten down until they're just semi-tight, but still have some room for adjustment. All right, and that should be good there. At this point, we're gonna relink our lights together with our preload mechanism attached to the lights. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. First, we're gonna take our linking bracket that we removed off our one light here and our uh, preload mechanism. And we're gonna put the preload mechanism in between the light and the bracket like so and make sure your uh, rubber bump stop here is facing towards the right, if you're looking at it like I am, uh, of this light here. Line these up so uh, the hole and the slot are matching. Then we're gonna use the new hardware that comes in another bag in the kit. So we're not reusing the hardware that we took out. We're actually using um, another set of hardware that they included. So once you put the screws through, we're gonna put the flat washers on this side so that they're on top of our preload mechanism. Then at this point, we are going to use the included Allen key to tighten this up. It might be easier if you put it in a couple of hands, uh, a couple of threads by hand first. There is Loctite pre-applied on this, uh, these bolts here, so they will be a little tight going in. This might be, uh, might make it a, a lot easier also if you have a socket with the matching size of, um, with the same Allen size. And I might do that myself. Right, so I found that a four millimeter um, Allen, Allen socket works for these bolts. So this will make it a lot easier. But if you don't have one, you always have the included tools. Then we're gonna leave this just a little bit loose for adjustment. Go. All right, once you have that in place, 
go ahead and link the lights together again. And for these brackets, we're gonna reuse the hardware that we took out earlier. So for the bottom bolts, make sure that you have this eyelet in between the brackets because that gets tightened down along with the uh, link brackets here. So for these bolts here, I'm using the bigger of the two provided Allen keys. And that's for uh, same for the top and bottom bolts. Again, I'm just slightly snugging these because this whole bar is adjustable, so it can be um, slightly bent. So we can keep these just a tad loose so that we can shape the lights as we'd prefer. Once you have your lights back together, it's time to mount them up on the brackets that we installed on our Bronco. Now to do this, you're gonna wanna grab a friend and prepare your hardware. So you got four bolts and four nylon locking nuts. And the tools you're gonna need are your 11 millimeter wrench and your three millimeter hex head socket. Once you have the holes lined up, Put the bolt in through the inside, through the brackets, and put the nylon locking nut on, few threads by hand. Then we're gonna tighten this down with our Allen key and our 11 millimeter socket. And we're gonna do the same thing for both sides. Once you have these all snugged down, we're gonna go back and just adjust everything so we get the right angle and the right pitch that we want with our lights. Once we have our light bar mounted up and we have it kind of positioned as far as angle and pitch that we, the way we want it. We're gonna go ahead and tighten down our preload mechanism here using our 11 millimeter wrench and socket. So we're lifting up on the light slightly so that we can put this bracket where it needs to be and then tightening down the nuts and bolts. We're under the hood now and we're prepping to run our main harness. There's a couple things we have to do before we can route this. Uh, one of the things is just to lift up the cowling back here with our T30 uh, Torx bit and we're gonna remove the antenna and then I'll show you how this wire gets routed. The antenna removes by simply twisting it off. Set that to the side. Now we're gonna remove this bolt here so that we can lift up the cowling. And this is a T30 Torx bit. Make sure to keep that bolt safe. Once that's out, we're gonna lift up the cowling. Now, at this point, you wanna get it up enough so you can feed the wire underneath. So I found it easier to put the hood down a little bit, if not the whole way. There we go. And then we can lift our cowling all the way up. All right, once we've got that in that position, we're gonna grab our wire now, and we're gonna route it from under the hood up through here and out this corner right up here so we can reach our light harness. We're gonna start with the connector end of our harness. 
We're gonna go up through the hood and up through the cowling like I showed you. Once you get the connector through the cowling, there's actually a little space in the, in the cowling right here where the wire can feed through. So pull enough through so you can reach the connector and hook them up. Continuing on, we're gonna route the wire along the firewall here. Just taking note of a couple good places where we could zip tie this down. And we're gonna take this the whole way across the firewall until we reach the battery. Once you have your main harness ran across the firewall and you have a good idea of where it's gonna go, next thing we're gonna do is make sure we have enough length, of course, and then we're gonna connect to the battery. First, we have to disconnect the negative battery terminal and then we're gonna connect our red wire to the red lead. And then we're gonna connect our ground to the black, ground lead, of course, and then reconnect the battery. To disconnect the negative battery terminal, we're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket. Once we have this disconnected, let's put that out of the way. There's a nice ground wire here we can use to make sure it doesn't touch the battery. Now we're gonna lift, lift up our positive um, protective case here. Once we got the cover removed, we're gonna take off this lug here, this nut. And this is where we're gonna, where we're gonna connect our positive lead. Again, that is a 10 millimeter socket. Right, now that we have that one tight, we're actually gonna take this nut the rest of the way off and slip our lead over the stud there. Once we have both wires connected, we can reattach the negative battery terminal to the battery. All right, now that we know that everything reaches and everything is connected, we can go back and zip tie our wire in place and also find a good place for our relay to mount. Now, you'll wanna mount your relay more permanently, but for this demonstration, I'm just gonna show you where I'm gonna mount it here. This is more of a temporary solution, but there's a good spot right here next to the battery, or I'm sorry, the fuse tray here. Take one of your zip ties, go through the hole in the relay mounting point and just go around uh, the battery tray attachment point here. But again, like I said, this is just a temporary solution. Um, there's a lot of good spots in here where you can permanently mount your relay. And then just run your wire back where you routed it and zip tie it up in place. And another quick note, just make sure that any slack you have is in the engine bay here. Next, we're routing our button through the firewall here, and the Bronco does have a good spot to do that. There's a grommet right here with an access hole through our firewall. So once you take that out, ours is already pre-slit, but once you have it out, it's a good idea to make some slits in here so that we can run our button through it and pull the wire all the way through and then put the button into the cabin and replace our grommet in the firewall. Um, and reason you wanna run it through the grommet like this is just so you're protecting the wire from any sharp edges right there at the firewall.
right? Once you have the button through, pull all of the slack through the grommet. Once we have all the slack through our grommet, we're gonna go back to the button and feed that through the firewall. All right, now that's all in there, we can put our grommet back in place. Now that all of our wire is in place, we're gonna reattach our cowling and we're also gonna reattach our antenna and then we're gonna fasten the wire here on the windshield. Now again, make sure that all your slack is through the cowling here and into the engine bay so that this wire is nice and taut against the windshield. And found the easiest way to put this back in place is just to put the hood down a little bit again. Then you can lift up from the front edge. So that the back edge of the cowling can go into the windshield weather stripping there, like such, then push that underneath the hood, push it in, into place. There's like little clips right here, so just make sure they're locked in. Once that looks nice and flush, we can put our T30 bolt back in. Once that's nice and flush, we can put our antenna back on. And now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna secure our wire to the windshield here. The kit comes included with these adhesive zip tie mounts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna position them where we'd like them to keep this nice and secure against the windshield like so. Once we know where they're gonna be, we're gonna peel the backing off, stick them to the windshield, and then zip tie them down. Once you have the negative battery terminal disconnected, I'll show you exactly how we're gonna mount our switch to our kick panel here. We have our switch and our wires pulled through our firewall now, so I'm gonna show you how and where to mount this up. On your kick panel here, you take your trim removal tool and work it along the top edge here all the way across. You can pull this down by releasing the clips. Now, a good spot to route this is through this hole right here next to the hood release handle and if you take a look here you'll see that there's recessed circles throughout the kick panel so theoretically you could mount this anywhere but there's two good locations here and here so if you would like to mount on either of these spots here just take your three quarter inch drill bit and drill through the back through the center of one of these holes when you do that Take your switch and actually remove it. So if you don't have a picture of the order of the wires yet, make sure you have that so you can put this on properly. Once your hole is drilled, your wires are disconnected from your switch, go ahead and route your wires through the hole. Now we won't be doing this uh, for this demonstration, but I'm gonna try to show you here as good as I can. So once you have your hole drilled, your wi wires will be through at this point and then you can reconnect your switch. At that point, pull the wires back through the hole until you get the switch to click into place in the hole that you drilled. For my purposes, I am just gonna be putting this right here for the rest of the demonstration. Once you have your switch mounted, just remember to reconnect your negative battery terminal 
and test out your lights again. That's going to wrap up this review and install of the Baja Designs 8XL linkable roof light bar kit for your 21 and newer Bronco. Thank you for watching and for all things Bronco, keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.